So just throwing it out to anyone that's listening, if you know anything about the Avenger and who they are, um, then yeah, let us know. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. This is day 57 and we're covering numbers 35 and 36. In Numbers 35, Israel gives 48 cities and suburbs to the Levites and are given laws regarding murder, manslaughter, revenge and refuge. And in Numbers 36, the fathers of Gilead speak with Moses about the daughter's inheritance and the Lord gives laws regarding daughters marrying and inheriting. Nice. Um, so, dude, I apologize because yesterday you were saying about wanting a map of the breakdown of Canaan and I showed you a map of uh, the Exodus. Turns out the Africa Bible does have a way smaller map, but a map nonetheless of the actual breakdown of um, yeah, the cities and that in Canaan. So, yeah, the boundaries of the land allotted to Israel in Numbers 34 are shown along with the area east of the Jordan occupied by Reuben, Gad, Manasseh. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, mate. So, apology accepted. Just never ever do it again. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So um, straight away, something that I love uh, about the God, the living God we serve, is that there are so many sort of small hints and 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 clues of how He is the same yesterday and the same today and this will be the same tomorrow. The the consistency and i think it comes through he's 100 percent just his perfect justice and that comes in uh numbers 35 6 the sanctuary cities yeah the fact there are going to be six towns which if someone kills someone they may flee to them and i just love the idea that that allows for real justice to happen because if they didn't have a safe place to go then they could easily be killed by people who believe they're guilty before there's any fair trial or any kind of inquest whatsoever. And, yeah. you know, this is revolutionary stuff for the cultures around Bronze Age, Middle Earth. Yeah. Uh, and um, it also just, I'll just skip, quickly skip down to Numbers 3530. No one is to be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Mm-hmm. So it, also help, it helps to enforce that, that law as well, because otherwise, if a father is pretty sure that this guy murdered his daughter in that rage, he might well, you know, get a, bunch of his buddies stone them to death or whatever and these sanctuary cities make sure that justice is done and it's also final thing sorry i know i'm speaking a lot about it i i found out that it's not for murderers though so if someone was proven to be a murderer and there was testimony of that then they were not allowed in the sanctuary city yeah yeah Yeah. exactly um one little sort of additional point in there that i picked up on is it was six of the lands given to the levites that would become cities of refuge and obviously the levites were there to serve the priests and so you would assume a a generally a sort of more godly people um and so it was cities of people that are there to basically serve god that had these these cities of refuge so actually hopefully you'd expect a fairer trial and i don't know there's something in that which i just i I took to and i quite liked it really um Mm -hmm. and yeah like you said it's verse 22 really it's all about the impulse it's not whether this is premeditated um although what i found interesting is it's saying it's basically in the uh the niv or the tniv um the avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when the avenger comes upon the murderer the avenger shall put the murderer to death like it's talking about the avenger and who like they have the right to do this, but it doesn't specify who the Avenger has to be. It doesn't right. make it that, you know, only the father or only a blood relative or only this, that or the other. It doesn't actually right. specify who the Avenger is or could be or should be or has to be or anything along those lines, which, I mean, it's it's quite interesting because... <sighs> we do occasionally Google answers because, you know, we're human and, and Google is magical. Don't talk to me again, Google, shut up. Uh, <laughs> um, but I wanted to Google this and try and find out like what this was, but I just didn't want to Google anything with the word Avenger in it and expect to find anything biblical <laughs> in the first 5,000 pages of the internet. So just throwing it out to anyone that's listening, if you know anything about the Avenger and who they are, um, 
then yeah, let us know. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say uh, the Avenger is actually Chris Pratt. Which I actually have a little Hawkeye back here that I was given for my sister's wedding. Um, it's on my little chess piece and he just sits up there now. Archie has Captain America downstairs somewhere. That's really cool. Captain, I like Captain America. I, I, I'm not supposed to covet things. So there you go. Anyway, um, so then I love all of the intricacies of who gets what punishment and why and so on. And it's, again, just this sense of justice that comes through. So if anyone strikes someone a fatal blow with an iron object, that person is a murderer. The murderer is to be put to death. So clearly, if you're striking someone with an iron object that you've grabbed, then that is pretty premeditated. Yes. Right? And uh, also, if it is out of enmity that one person hits another with their fist, then that's also seen as premeditated because it's an ongoing feud, mm -hmm. an ongoing anger, right? Um, so that's numbers 35, 21. I also said that that's why forgiveness is so important to Jesus, you know, the, the golden commandment, so to speak, right? Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Yep. Really, love one another. Because, and, and forgive, turn the other cheek. But that isn't going to be happening all the time, right, in these societies. And so these blood feuds are going to, pop up sometimes yeah bloods versus the crips and so on yes um and then i can't remember exactly what it was but it was something along the lines of ultimately if accidentally you kill someone obviously mur that's not murder and therefore those are the people that may flee to the flee to the sanctuaries yeah. and also they are not they should make atonement but not be put to death yeah and i'd like to point out obviously the whole point of these cities is that it's their for the innocent those that have killed accidentally it doesn't mean that yes. no justice is taken there's still basically by the sounds of it, there's still a trial it kind of mentions it, i think in the uh africa bible somewhere like there is still a trial that takes place um kind of where i saw it now like everything is still done properly to make sure that proper justice is done because it actually then goes on to say um at the end of 35 do not pollute the land where you are. Bloodshed pollutes the land and atonement cannot be made for the land on which blood has been shed, except by the blood of the one who shed it. Do not defile the land where you live. Um, and so obviously it's basically saying it's this whole eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth type situation where if murder has taken place, the only way that can be atoned for pre-Jesus is by the, the guilty party being killed themselves. Right. One thing I was curious about, though, as well, and again, fairly above our pay grade, is if someone was found out to be innocent and therefore, yes, accidentally killed somebody, is there still any uh, recompense that needs to go to the family or those affected by the person that's died? Because if a breadwinner in a family has died, therefore, widow, children, etc., do they now receive anything out the back of it, yes, the um, the person that did it isn't guilty of murder, but they still took a life. Where where does it stand on that? Like, are there any repercussions I, for them still? That I'm I can't right off the top of my head say, and it is above our pay grade. But I believe that what you're saying here will be answered in the coming days as we go into Deuteronomy. Cool. I think that there are some pretty clear uh, things about that. We, will, we can also Google it and sort of answer that in the next day or yeah. two as we record. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to include here, at least briefly, Numbers 36, 6, the Lord commands for Zelophehad's daughters that they marry anyone they please as long as they marry within their father's tribal clan. And um, I just found it interesting that in the old covenant, there was still a freedom to marry within certain constraints. Mm -hmm. And that's the same really for Christians today in the new covenant. We are to marry within the faith. So there is a constraint, yeah. but ultimately we do have a lot of freedom. And that's very progressive for females uh, in Bronze Age of Middle Earth. Yeah. And I guess this was the uh, completion of the fact that they were entitled their inheritance, but it still had to stay yeah. in family. So it's, it's good. There were boundaries put around it, like you say, but way more free than anywhere else. You can just get this. I know we're running out of time. You get this sense of how God is slowly working up to Jesus through True. these actions. True. Cool. Beauty. All right, then, please feel free to engage with us. Insta at Two Brits in a Bible. Please consider liking and subscribing to help spread the word of God. 